Hey everybody, Adam Savage, not in my cave. Oh no, I am in Tested's offices, yes. Um, I want to say one thing to everybody who has visited Tested's offices in the past well, three or four years. I just want to say I am sorry. Uh, we all went remote at Tested, which is great. Um, but we have this office and it became a glorified storage facility. Um, and I tack I started tackling it a couple of weeks ago and we have made great guns progress. There's all sorts of stuff to show you. I mean, oh, it's a really beautiful space now. There are some things I can't show you, <laughs> but for right now, you might notice this back wall, which has had a beautiful piece of woodwork by uh, Tested's own Aza Hillis. Not Tested's own, but Aza used to be my shop assistant and did some wonderful freelance work for us. Uh, and we had this large wooden uh, shelf maze Tested logo back there. And I pulled it down this morning because I'm gonna swap that for five Billy bookcases. We're changing the fundamental sort of dynamic in this room. Um, that was prioritizing having a background, an official like, you know, it's a YouTube channel. YouTube channels have standard backgrounds. And, and back when we did that, we were kind of following that same form. But uh, if there's anything that typifies this channel is that I'm, I'm never in front of the same background. Well, I mean, you know, I'm at my cave, but the shot's always different. So I wanted the tested space to also be a variegated space with many different zones and possibilities for shooting. Um, the maker room in tested's offices is a real shit fight. Uh, and that needs the most amount of work. We did tremendous work in the camera room. Well, we're going to show you. Um, and we have a 3D printing farm here at the offices. I have one at the cave and now we have one here at the offices. Um, yeah, there'll be some videos about some of the things I'm doing in the tested offices. I'm going to make some lighting trusses for uh, uh, Joey and Josh uh, and some other things in the coming weeks. But right now, I'm going to fill that space with billies. And billies are, bill what do I mean by billy? Billy is a, the standard bread and butter bookcase that Ikea sells. They are under a hundred bucks. It comes with five shelves, six shelves. It comes with four movable shelves. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you end up with six shelves of the Billy. It comes with some standard wooden shelves. It comes in, if I remember correctly, three colors, white, black, and natural. I could be wrong about that. They could have changed that over the years. But the, my display cases in the cave are all Billy bookcases. I'm not doing the same thing here as I do in my cave. I'm not doing glass shelves. And I am also not doing um, doors. We don't need glass reflections on those. Um, but there is going to be lighting. That will be a separate video than today's video. Today I am simply going through the rigmarole that we have all done, which is assembling IKEA furniture. And um, I'm just going to be assembling it efficiently because I've been doing this for a long time and I love having the right tools for doing this kind of busy work. Um, it is very much busy work. It is plug and play. But I have five billies that have to be transported over here and I have to hand carry them. So that's the first part. Um, that's kind of hard on this old body of mine. Uh, so I'm just going to go slow. We'll get all those billies up and running. And hopefully they'll be up in the next uh, two hours, which is important because I got a phone call at exactly that time. Here we go. Okay. Oh, whoops. This is the, definitely the hardest part of the work today. Alright. 
So, uh, one of my keys for IKEA furniture is power tools. Number one, power tools. And uh, the Billies have two large uprights, three permanent shelves, four moving shelves. Um, and it has these screw bosses that get attached to the long uprights. And those have a Phillips head on them and you can put them in by hand in a very short period of time, but don't go get the a drill driver. That, one of those. Um, then uh, when you're locking the permanent shelves in, uh, there are these cam locks that attach to those screw bosses. Only need a flathead screwdriver for that, so I'm gonna grab one of those. But I am not assembling a single billy until these are all unwrapped and all of their parts are stacked. I'm assembly lining this whole thing. You can see my philosophy of tackling a job like this. So that's the first bit of business is crack that open. I'm gonna give you a uh, wide, a wide angle. So here's the thing I so here's the thing I want to communicate about that. That was all five Billy bookcases unwrapped, set out in piles of each of the parts that they are in less than 10 minutes. It was tedious and it was tiring and it was hard on my body, sure. But it, this is just something that's a frame that I really want you to hold when you're doing work where it's like. A bunch of it is unsavory. It's easy to look at like, I have to carry five Billy bookcases, a couple hundred feet each in order to get them in here and be like, oh. but like remembering that it's only 10 minutes and then you're done with it. That's the hardest part of the day, 10 minutes. The tedious stuff always takes less time than you think it does. That's what I wanted to communicate. Okay, so let's... Uh, we're gonna get some uh, part sorters here. Okay. I've got all this hardware. These uh, parts bins are left over from my nuts and bolts from my Hi. Yeah, I'm sweaty. I don't know why I'm bragging about it. Um, so uh, we have some parts and pieces here, and I want to sort them out because I want to make the job go faster. So. <clears throat> the goal with assembly lining is each approach gets hap happens once. Right? So if I'm sorting bags, I'm sorting all of them at once. This is. I These are the first thing I separate out all the wooden dowels. All right. Two handed. I always like this way of going. If I can. Always be grabbing, maybe B. This is a few minutes spent at the front end, saving myself a ton of work on the back end. That's it. Is the full complement of the hardware for the Billies. So here you can see nails, shelf brackets, 
around locking things, the screw bosses, the bracket screws and washers, and the dowel pins. There we go. Uh, for the record, I didn't know that I needed exactly six bins, but I'm lucky that that's pr pretty much the case. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we've got all of these pieces of wood. They all go together in a certain order. And that order is gonna be the following. And this is how I build a single Billy bookcase. I lay out the two uprights, these guys. I lay out the two uprights. I suck in all the dowels and all the screw bosses. I know I'm probably not referring to them by the right name, but these. So I put in all of these and these. These and these, and I believe there is, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 16. There's 16 of each, if I remember correctly, or maybe it's not an exact, uh, but I'm gonna lay out all 10 of these and do all of the screws uh, and the dowels right up front. Damn it. Oh, I got you this great shot and a time lapse of me going through and putting in all this hardware and then I forgot to press record. Uh, so, what I was going to say before I forgot what my job was, uh, was if you could have seen the time lapse, you would have noticed me going through this set of uh, 10 Ikea Billy bookcase sides and I put in all the dowels and I went brr, brr, I went for the dowels I went brr, 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 and for the other pieces I went brr, 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 brr. Uh, I did two different patterns and you may wonder why I would do two different patterns and the answer is it bears repeating that whenever I'm doing really tedious crap, I am entertaining myself by thinking of ways I could do it faster, more efficiently, and just slightly differently. Um, all of those things are in play. So now I'm about to put in all of the uprights on five of them. Yeah, we're gonna, this time I will not forget to press report. Did you notice how I got a little bit faster as I went? That, that is like a key aspect of doing this kind of tedium work is that you do get better as you go. Um, and that makes the job a lot more fun. Uh, right, these are all temporary shelves. So now I can start to put the things on top of the things. So let us move. So let us melt and make no noise. We're going to do, we're going to do this one. So, oh, I am sure that there are Facebook groups where people trade back and forth the tips for the best assembly of IKEA furniture. I'm positive that exists. But uh, in my estimation, this is exactly how you want to do it. You want to do the way I've done it. And then when you put the board on top, you do the middle first, then the bottom, which is the real hard part, then the top, which is the easiest. So get this up, get it sighted, get it in. For this job, I have chosen the king of screwdrivers, a mid-70s Stanley uh, number 6204 flathead with the best gription I've ever experienced. And now, yeah, let's install some things.
Okay. This I did not realize. The backs have to go up from the bottom. Are you literally like not fitting plus or minus an inch or so? So they're up, but they're not done. Because I've got to All right, so it looks like this thing fits, but with a... Uh... Oh, whoops. Regular watchers of this channel know how um, one of my one of my personal bugbears as a maker is I tend to get greedy about tolerance and I don't want to waste space. So I've got a space to fill and I'm making something to fill it. I'm always doing this. I'm always hammering the last bit because I don't provide enough room. But the Billy bookcase is 31 and a half inches wide. And now you can see that that times five is precisely the width of wainscoting the wainscoting here. Yeah, that's got a little marker in there. Those are clean, those are clean, this is great. Um, that solves a couple of problems for me. I mean, it is level. Not much I can do to make it any better than that. Uh, I'm gonna lock these to each other and then I'm gonna secure them to the wall.
Oh, great. They're, they have a slight back lean to them, which is actually what I want. Well, I'll tell you what I want, whatever it is that they want. I want a zig zig off. There we go. Look at that, that expanse. It's beautiful. Um, I have figured out how I'm going to light these. And it's different than how I've done it in the past. Uh, at my cave, the Billy bookcases all have doors and I've been running a line of LED, uh, LED strip up the mullion of those, of those doors. But, I think on this front, why is it so dark? It's dark because I don't have the lights on. So I think instead what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna run these bits of molding across the entire length at one, two, three, four, five shelf levels and put the strip behind those so that they, they light it up. And I found some strip that allows me to adjust the color temperature, which is, in particular, something I'm curious about. Um, our camera team should be able to film at whatever color temperature they would like. And I was purchasing an undershelf light for the maker space here. So because this is dark, I was gonna put a shelf light under here and I went looking and I thought, oh, I wonder if you can buy lights where you can adjust the color temperature. And the answer is yes, you can. Yes, you can. So I'm going to do that. Um, but that is the end of today's project. We will cover lighting as a separate uh, video for Tested, um, totally separate. But that is five Billy bookcases. Uh, I think that took me a total of two hours, start to finish. Um, good stuff. But you can never bring an a piece of Ikea furniture to a second location. <laughs> Like a hippie, never go with Ikea furniture to a second location. It's not gonna, not gonna survive very well. But uh, that brings the grand total of Billy's in our space to, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four here, one more there. We've got 10 going on. This is great. Feels really awesome. Hey guys, thanks for joining me for this office restoration and Billy bookcase install, and I will see you guys next time. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick my measuring forearm uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body because I use mine every single day.